This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good morning or good evening, wherever you might be. Welcome to the Glasov gang and this is the Daniel Greenfield moment. Tonight, I would like to talk to you about the greatest possible threat to national security, the weather. As you might have heard, global warming is. Anyway, according to the raving madmen, running what's left of the Democratic Party into the ground like a flaming comet into the sun, the greatest threat to national security. That's right, the weather. Pay no attention to the massacre in Paris. Never mind what just happened in California. The real threat is your thermometer. But tonight I want to break from the deep thoughts of such respected minds as Bernie Sanders and Barack Obama and Ronald McDonald to talk about the true greatest threat to national security, the jet plane. Sometimes terrorists fly jet planes into buildings. Sometimes they arrive on them at airports, step out, smile, and apply for political asylum. That was how the ringleader of the original World Trade Center attack did it. He came as a refugee. He applied for political asylum. These days, the media spent a lot of time talking about how we've been betraying the values of the Statue of Liberty, you know, the giant green statue, by wanting to make sure that our country isn't invaded by Islamic terrorists and that we aren't massacred on our way to the subway. The funny thing about that, though, is that a refugee Islamic terrorist actually headed up a plot to blow up the Statue of Liberty. The man known as the Blind Sheikh, whose followers were linked not only to the World Trade Center bombing, but to a variety of other jihadi about town terrorist activities, had a long list of New York City landmarks that he just couldn't wait to blow up. And like every Thursday, included the Statue of Liberty. You know, the one that uh, we're supposed to take in migrants in their name. But that seems only fitting because if there are two things Islamic terrorists really hate, it's unveiled women and liberty. The greatest threat to national security, to our freedom and our future, isn't the weather, it's not the thermometer, you won't find it on the Weather Channel, it's migration. In ancient times, wars began when nomadic groups migrated into somebody else's territory. Today, it's our territory that is being migrated into. A quarter of Afghans told Gallup that they want to leave. Afghanistan is a country of 30 million, so it's not that hard to do the math on that. More than 100,000 are expected to try to go to Europe this year. Some simply found that the Germany was open and they began walking. That's how these things begin, but it's not how they end. Some Syrians have already actually made it over to our southern border. Now, I know the official story is that all the Syrian migrants are just widows and orphans uh, who are really turned out to be 23-year-old men who are hobbling on their missing legs to escape ISIS. And the moment they reach America, they kiss the ground and begin singing, I'm a Yankee doodle dandy. But in the real world, polls show that one in five Syrians supports ISIS and a third like the al-Nusra Front, which is the local Al-Qaeda franchise. A 2007 poll showed 77% supported financing Hamas, and about the same amount were all for aiding the so-called Iraqi fighters, who were then backed by the Syrian government before turning into ISIS. Even the polling of Syrian refugees shows that 13% support ISIS. 19% of them view America as the greatest threat. 37% of them oppose U.S. airstrikes on ISIS. These are the poor, poor victims we're taking in, and boy, are we ever being taken in. Even if that 13%, that first 13% is as bad as it gets, that still means that Obama's first hot batch of 10,000 Syrian refugees will contain 1,300 ISIS supporters. What can 1,300 ISIS supporters do to America? Just wait and find out. The United States already resettles more people than anyone else. Not a single Muslim country participates in the resettlement programs. Not one. Turkey and Jordan have refugee camps, but they aren't giving any of them citizenship. And the Syrians themselves, when they were flooded with Iraqi refugees, treated them like garbage and used them as sex slaves. The United States has nothing to feel guilty about because we do more than anything else. And now we're being taken advantage of. The United States resettles more than anybody else. We take the risks and we're, taking, we're accepting the damage. There are an estimated 16 million people displaced people who are on the move. And as we've seen with Afghanistan, a whole lot of people can begin moving once the opportunity presents itself, and the opportunity has presented itself. 640 million people surveyed want to move somewhere else. 150 million of them would like to come to America. Now, that's quite a few people. 42 million would like to move to Canada. There's one problem. That's more than the entire population of Canada. 
26 million would like to move to Australia. Unfortunately, Australia only has 23 million people right now. 26 million would like to move to Germany, and you know with Muti Merkel these days they can. That poll is from 2012, the numbers would be even worse now. The UN Refugee Agency says more than 218,000 immigrants crossed the Mediterranean in October. That's more in all of 2014. It estimates that more than 600,000 people crossed the Mediterranean this year. Those are the disturbing figures. Don't take it from me. The spokesman for the United Nations Human Commissioner for High Commissioner for Refugees called some of them beyond anything that could have been expected even a few months ago. And the more we open the door, the more we open the borders, the worse it's only going to get. With chain migration, these figures are just the opening round. Germany froze family unification as part of a political compromise for two years. Why? Because estimates that each migrant would bring along as many as eight family members, which means you have to multiply each migrant crossing the border by eight. Now you can see why even Sweden is beginning to beg for mercy. Sweden is set to bring in 180,000 asylum seekers this year. This is a country where the young male population is at around 600,000. But the real demographic bankruptcy is in the birth rate. In Sweden, like in the rest of Europe, they're not having children. In Sweden, a quarter of the children are already born to immigrant mothers. A lot of them are Somali Muslims. Somalia's birth rate is three times higher than Sweden's. Germany's birth rate is at 1.3. Syria's birth rate is more than twice that. Afghanistan's birth rate is four times that. European countries skew old, Muslim countries skew young. So for example, the median age of Germany's population is 46, which is pretty old. The median age of its Muslim population is 34, which is fairly young. Once all the migrants who are in the majority young men are accounted for, the median age is going to drop down even lower. You hear a lot of worries about some European countries like Slovenia or Latvia and the migration route ending up with more migrant men of fighting age than exist in the native population. That's effectively an invasion. We're just not allowed to call on one. When you're talking about countries with low birth rates, it's not that hard to achieve a scenario where the young male migrants displace the young male population, the young male population of the country completely. That's why Muhammad is the most popular name in the UK or in Oslo. Oslo is less than 10% Muslim, but it's Muslim where it counts among the youngest generation. That's why in the UK, one in three Muslims is under 15. Among children up to four years old, Muslims are at 9%. That's double their proportion in the overall population. The future of the UK is in that child population. The future of a country is in its children. And that population is already 9% Muslim. We like to think that it doesn't apply to us, but uh, it does. We're not immune to math. We're not immune to the logic of geometric progression. The Muslim population in the U.S. has increased 67% since September 11th. The U.S. has a higher birth rate, but most of the same European numbers, they still apply to us. The Muslim population in the U.S. is younger. Their birth rate is higher. And the potential for national transformation is huge. That's why the Democrats are championing the immigration the migration of this particular population. Warfare, you can call it invasion, takes a younger population. You need cannon fodder. You need people who are willing to kill and die. The Muslim world has a large disposable young male population. A chunk of that population is making its way to Europe even as we speak. It seems like a big chunk to us, but by their standards, it's hardly noticeable. It's that disposable young male population which doesn't bother to get jobs, which parties and does drugs, then suddenly finds religion and redemption by killing a whole bunch of non-Muslims. It's the same story we've been hearing all along. It's not just Europe's story. Unfortunately, it's our story too. Think about the Tsarnaev brothers, who went from drug dealers to jihadists. This is a common career course. And this is the national security that we are up against. It's not as glamorous as global warming. The no telethons and Al Gore won't stand in front of a giant spreadsheet with his arms spread out, warning that the polar bears are all about to die. But it's real, and it's here now, even if there are no celebrity concerts or Al Gore endorsements. The real national security threat comes from the oldest form of war, migration. Entire civilizations were wiped out by migration. If we don't shut the doors, we might just end up becoming another footnote in somebody else's ancient history. And now with those reassuring words, let me wish you good night, or once again, good morning, wherever you are. To support the show, go to jamieglazoff.com. And be sure to subscribe to the Glass of Gang's YouTube channel to see more great videos like this.